like our Jehovah. If you know there is no one like our healer, you will lift your hands. You will give him a wave of offering. You will lift your voices. You will say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because the Bible says, as many that, are, that have bread, lift up your voices and give praise unto the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, let's come into our Father's house. What an opportunity to see the second Sunday of the month of April. I'm telling you, there are many people who started this year, but they are not here today. There are many people who started this month, but they are not here today. There are people who are here today, but they are in the hospital. There are people who are, uh, who, who are depending on oxygen to breathe, but you are here today with your two hands, with your two legs. Come and lift up your voices, because he is not the man. He is not a man that lies. His word is yea and amen. He says what he does and he does what he says. Come on, lift up with grateful hearts. Lift up, come and jam your hands together for Jesus. Jam your hands together for Jesus.
as you will jump your hands together for Jesus. You will make a joyful noise to the King of Kings because there is nobody like him. Are you ready to praise God this morning? Hallelujah. If your shoe will stop you from praising God, I want you to take it off, okay? Because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of... I cannot hear you. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of... So I want you to dance like never before. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Lord, you are so good. Blessed be your name.
scriptures Psalms 33 verses 8 it says the Lord says I will guide you along the best pathway for your life I will advise you and watch over you amen, amen. I just want us as a church to take one prayer point this morning that said Lord let your hand hold me until I get to my destination. Just open your mouth. Say, Lord, let your hand hold me until I get to my destination. Lord, your hand will hold my children. 
Your hand will hold my husband. Your hand will hold me, Lord. You will not leave me alone. You will not forsake me. I will not walk alone. I will never be alone. Your hand will hold me. Your hand will hold us as a church, O oh Lord. Until we get to our destination. We will not be missing, O oh Lord. We will not lose it, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. The Lord is good. And all the time. Praise the Lord. Welcome to church, everyone. Could you please sit down? If we... Do we have anybody worshiping God for the first time this morning? Oh, bless you. Hallelujah. Somebody at the back. Oh, God bless you. Welcome, sister. The Lord bless you. This is RCCG Inspiration House Trilly, where God changes life for the better. We bless God for bringing you here in our midst this morning. This is not by mistake. God has brought you here for a purpose. And the Lord will see you through in Jesus' name. Once again, welcome everybody online and on site. Thank you for worshiping us, for being with us this morning. The Lord who has brought you thus far will not leave you hanging on the way in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, the announcement I have with me here this morning. First and foremost, we start with the celebrant. It's good to celebrate, isn't it? So I just I have names here like much anyway. So just hold on, don't be too much in a hurry. After everything, let's celebrate all together. Um, first on my list, I have Sister Mercy Itohan Laleye, Sister Etel Petra Ojogun on the seventeenth of, of April. I have Caroline Moyo on the seventeenth of April. I have Eniola. Aribi on the 19th of this month, Tomiwa uh, Adetuji on the 19th, Blessing Ilunga on the 19th, Sister Aida Mati, Matigimo on the 19th too, loads of 19. We have Elizabeth Martin on the 20th, Ekene John Uwanfo on the 20th. Could you clap for everyone? Celebrate them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God will give them reasons to celebrate in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, uh, the, the weekly activities. This is our online service activity. So, like, we, we go to, uh, via the Zoom. The first, we have prayer or uh, altar of fire, which is Monday to Friday. If you are looking for any platform to kickstart your day with every morning, please join the church platform. We have one in the church too. So it's every morning, 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m., just 30 minutes alone. We have Bible studies too, and dig it deep, every Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Prayer meeting and Holy Communion service every Friday evening, 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. All the activities, just one hour or 30 minutes, that's all. So please, make a time to join it. It's even online. Make a, make a time to do all this. And as you do that, God will bless you in Jesus' name. And the big one, we have done the birthday celebrant. There's also a big celebrant in our midst that I have not called. The church will be 22 years old. Hallelujah. So as such, the 22nd anniversary of the church is scheduled from Friday 26th to Sunday the 28th of this month. And the minister that is God has appointed to give to be with us this year is Pastor Mrs. Grace Okoronde. All the way from USA. Pavelo Redemption Parish. Praise the Lord. Are we excited? You don't know what's happening. I'm telling you, be excited. Plan towards it. Plan towards it. God is good. 
those of us who have been here, we know that God is good. So I, I challenge every one of us that come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Just plan towards it. Don't miss it. He's, the word alone, you'll be surprised at what the Bible, just the, the simple word, this woman of God is going to explain to you how it's going to minister to you. Plan to attend. Miracles will happen. There'll be testimony. Just make up your mind. Spiritually, emotionally, mentally, make up your mind that it is my season and I will receive. So book uh, uh, your, your dates off your calendar and be ready for signs and wonders. Amen. 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 So like um, event for, the, for that uh, week from 26th, that's a Friday, we have the power nights from 6.30 p.m. You saw what happened here this morning. This is just a taste. In fact, we have a guest minister coming to join these bulldozers. So tell me, who is that devil that will not run away? I'm telling you, like two powers are joining together. So something is going to happen. So this force and that force coming, then let's see what the devil is going to do in this assembly again. It's going away. So please, plan for these days. So we have the power nights on the 26th of April by 6.30 p.m. Then on Saturday, we have, um, in the morning, we have water baptism. There's also um, workers rally by 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then we have evening of worship. Don't, don't miss it. Like I said, I, do you know what happened? If you notice, I came here with pain. I was holding my neck. But when, this, when everything was going, I, I, just, I didn't know when I took off my, my hand, though, because I just couldn't. So I cannot ask myself, <sighs> imagine these forces joining with, with our guest um, 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 choir that is coming. So greater thing is, uh, is bound to happen in this church. So be ready. Then on Sunday is the grand finale. We have the anniversary Thanksgiving. This same place. Praise the Lord. Then we have Children's Day coming up soon. Amen? I know they've all gone downstairs, but you know, at heart we are children. So we have Children's Day coming up soon. That's the May the 26th. Children's Day remind me of summer proper because that day you see everybody like just dressed with t-shirts and all. That's when you know that actually we are, we are enjoying the weather. So let's, for those of us that have children and guardian, let's encourage them to, uh, be, uh, to be prepared for it. So let's look forward for that day. And the department needs volunteers and teachers. Please, this is a comfort for more information. Our free time. Our free time. Could we just take out our offering and our tithes? Even as we speak to God about what we're just about to give to him now. Can we stand up, please? Stand up, hold your offering, hold your tithe. For those who give online, their details are on the, on, the, on the screen. We just want to pray and say, Lord God, accept our tithe and our offering this morning. Father, we pray that this you have given us, O oh Lord you will use to build your kingdom. And the Lord, you will use this to chase away sickness, diseases, and affliction from among us. And good things you will not withhold from us. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Over to your choir.
stay on our feet as we take the congregational hymn. The hymn says, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Amen. Amen.
our guide, the one who is our friend, just as that song said, there is no friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. Not your father, not your mother, not your brother, not your sister, not your wife, not your husband. All about Jesus is only Jesus. He is that friend that will not leave us alone. He is that friend that is willing and he did die for us. Let's worship the King of Kings. Let's worship the Lord of Lords, the Ancient of Days, the one who was, who is, and who is to come, the one who reigns forever, the omnipotent God the one besides whom there is none let's magnify the prince of peace the one who is coming every storm in our lives the one who says he knows all about our struggle and is willing to guide us until the very end lord we bless you this morning we give you all the glory we give you all honor thank you father lord jehovah daddy for the time of the worship we thank you for the time of the announcement we thank you for the time of the hymn and once again we are thanking you in advance for what you will do at this time take all the glory lord for in jesus name we have prayed 
For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. And let's please have our seats this wonderful morning. We are all welcome to church. It's a lovely day to be alive and to be in the presence of God. Uh, we want to specially thank the choir this morning. You've done tremendously well. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. And like we normally pray for you, you will not only sing in this church, you will equally sing in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to welcome everyone, those who are here in the auditorium and those who are online. God bless you real good. This is the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Inspiration House Trailly, where God is changing lives for the better. Amen. It can only get better. Hallelujah. Um, I want to thank the pastoral team, pastor and the ministers for this privilege to stand on this exalted altar. Actually, this is my first time standing here since we changed the altar. You know the old altar? You can actually hide your legs from, if your leg is shaking, you are behind this, nobody is seeing. But this one, I just want to thank God for that flower there. So if my legs are shaking this morning, there is no way you will see it. I'm well covered. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I say thank you, sir. More grace, more anointing. May the Lord continue to honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I have a lot of announcements. As a matter of fact, I was just receiving announcements and announcements, and I said, by the time I finish giving all these announcements, there will be no time for the word. We will just go home. And thank God that whether or not I exhaust my, my uh, notes, we are blessed already. Do we agree? Yes. How many of us are already blessed even before we go into the word? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. So I will start with the house fellowship centers. Um, I've been instructed to announce to us that the house fellowship Centers are up and running beginning from today. All the centers will be up and running. Please, let's check either the champs or let's look up and see the information that is being displayed with regards to the location of all the house fellowship centers. Please ring up the coordinators and let them tell you the time that you are meeting in your center. And God bless each and every one of us as we do so. The house fellowship is very, very important. It's church that is close to home. And that's where we grow. That's where we fellowship one with another. Sometimes on Sundays, each and every one of us is in a hurry to leave the auditorium. But when you go to the house fellowship, you get to know more about the person that is living around or in your estate. And God bless us as we comply in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, now, uh, thank God, Sister Harry gave us the lowdown regarding the, um, the 22nd anniversary of the church. April is such a special month to us in Inspiration House, Trailly, because this is the time that this church was in inaugurated. And so this year we are celebrating in a big way. So come the 26th to the 28th, as we were told, we will be having our 22nd church anniversary celebration. Hallelujah. Amen. Is someone excited? And of course, just like, let me reiterate what Sister Harris said, that it's not me that said it. When she started talking about bulldozers, so she said when power joins power, you know, walls are bound to come down. I, as she was saying it, I remember a song that we used to sing back then. I won't sing it because it's in pigeon. But it goes that, you know, we carry Holy Ghost. If Satan is not going to leave the road, we will crush him. Hallelujah. How many of us are ready to crush the devil? Let's make it a point of duty. Let's come, come the 26th. And it's going to start powerfully with power night. We've not had power night in a long time. 
is always a night of wonders, a night of signs, a night of miracles. So let's prepare. And of course, the vessel that God is going to use is ready. And I know God is ready. Hallelujah. So what we are to do as a church is this. Uh, let's listen. We will be having a uh, three days pre-anniversary prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Did I hear somebody say, hmm? <laughs> three, just three days. One, two, three. Hallelujah. So we will be meeting as a church 6 p.m. in the evening just to pray regarding the anniversary. And I trust God. He is in the business of hearing our prayers. And this time around will not be an exception in the name of Jesus Christ. So pre-anniversary, three days prayer and fasting starts next Monday, the 22nd of April through to Wednesday, the 24th of April. And we will be meeting at 6 p.m. via Zoom to break our fast together. Um... Another announcement I have here is that as we are preparing spiritually, physically, emotionally, and all of that, the anniversary is going to cost us something. It requires our finances. And nobody is going to be levied. Nobody is going to be uh, forced. Please, if you like to um, voluntarily donate towards the anniversary, please see our financial secretary, Sister Teresa Martins. Sister Teresa, please, let's see your hand up. Please see her, or if she's not in the church, please see Sister Bumi, our usher. Sister Bumi, would like to see you, yes. So let's see either Sister Teresa or Sister Bumi and give towards the anniversary, remembering that God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Um, another announcement I have here is that on Saturday, the 27th, that there will be a water baptism in the morning. And so we want to just encourage everyone who has received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but due to one reason or another, you have been unable to be baptized by water immersion. Please leave your name with either the ushers or A.P. Kingsley. A.P. Kingsley is at the very back there. And equally, for those who would like to join the workforce of the church, you want to undergo the workers' training, also leave your names with A.P. Kingsley. Hallelujah. And finally, finally, this morning, um, Sister Herod just mentioned there that we will be having a guest minister uh, in addition to the choir during the evening of worship, and she is in, she is Pastor Mrs. Olajumoke Bamidele OJB. I don't know how many of us know her, but she is a powerful minister of God. She is going to be here live and direct for the evening of worship, and indeed, God is going to do mighty things through her and our choir in the name of Jesus Christ. <sighs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now we can go on to the word. Praise the Lord. Um, we know as um, we can see on the, on the screen behind me there that this is our month of divine guidance. Divine guidance. And under that central team, I just bring us a word this morning. And the title of this very brief exhortation is guided along the best path. Guided along the best path. And in a short while, we'll be looking at the anchor scripture for this month, which is Psalm 32 verse 8. Psalm 32 verse 8, which is where the topic was coined from. Um, we know that in life, there are many pathways. Sometimes they may feel right even. Sometimes they don't feel right. Sometimes they, we are towing the path, but they are not leading to anywhere. Because the Bible makes us to understand in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, it says that there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. How do we navigate the journey of life? 
How do we make decisions as it pertains to our life? These are many more questions we are going to try and answer this morning as the Holy Spirit will give us the enablement. I just want to also ask a question, like if we, we are going on a journey and we miss our way, let's say we want to go from here to super value and you don't know the direction, what do we do? What do we do? We ask questions. We ask for direction. But when it comes to the journey of life, a lot of us don't bother to ask questions. We don't bother to ask for direction. And that is what God wants us to do, which takes me to the first thing I want to say this uh, morning, that the very first step towards being guided by God is the realization that you need a guide. Hallelujah. That we need a guide. That we cannot do it on our own. Because, and the reason why we need, you know, divine guidance is because God is the one who created the heavens and the earth. There is no pathway we want to take that is not aware of. He is the creator of the pathway. So when we are on a journey... He knows all the crooked places on the pathway. He knows the rumps and the bumps. He knows the places that are smooth. He knows exactly where we should tread. Hallelujah. So the first thing is that we need him. We need him to guide us. And he's willing and interested in guiding us. Let's go to our anchor scripture. Psalm 32 verse 8. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. New Living Translation, and that is where the title, the topic for this um, exhortation was coined from. The Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. It shows here that God himself is the one who has decided to guide us. Because we matter to him. Where we go, matter to him. Our issues, our matter, matters to God. So if you are here this morning and you think, oh, maybe because um, I'm not a worker in the church or I'm not holding the microphone, I don't matter to God. Remember this scripture, that it is God himself. Because that uh, translation says that the Lord says, I will guide you. I will guide you along the best path for your life. And we know that before somebody, something can get to the level of best, it means that there may be a good pathway, isn't it? There may be a better pathway. But the pathway that God wants to guide us along is the best. Only the very best is good for us. Hallelujah. The most we can do for ourselves is maybe a good pathway. We can try, you know, we can try and even get a better one. But the best, the scripture said here that only the best pathway will God guide us along. And when I was looking at that scripture, it occurred to me that um, guidance or to guide someone goes beyond just showing them the way. Like I said earlier, if somebody wants to go to super value and the person comes to me for direction and I begin to point and I say, oh, when you get out of the church, turn right, turn left. Now it depends on the person's knowledge of this area, one, or the person's ability to be able to take instruction if it's somebody like me, I don't have a sense of direction. If you tell me to go left, I probably go right. But it is a lot better when I take the person by hand and I say, let's go to super value together. The likelihood is that the person will get there faster. The person will not exert a lot of energy. Hallelujah. And there will be no wasting of time and resources. Because if you are trying to 
navigate your way or locate the place you're wasting time. But if I hold you by hand and say, let's go to Super Value, because I know where Super Value is, I will take the shortest uh, route and we will get there and we will do whatever we want to do. So God, who is our guide, wants not only to show us the way, he wants to accompany us on the journey to ensure that we get to our desired destination. He says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. Along the best pathway for your life. So where is the best pathway? In my opinion, the best pathway is where God is guiding us. Where we are in God's presence. And, you know, I read quite a number of translations of this, our anchor scripture, just to have more understanding of it. The easy translation says that, I will teach you the right way to live. I will be your guide and I will take care of you. So the best pathway for us is where God is teaching us the right way to live. And he's also taking care of us. Who can take care of us more than God? As a parent, as a mother, or as a father, there is no way you love your children or your child to the point of being with them 24-7. There will be time you will doze off. There will be time you will fall asleep. How many times when uh, Dami was a baby that I'll say I'll be fe I'm feeding her, I'll be so tired that I'll leave the <laughs> feeding bottle in her mouth and doze off. And God is saying that I am your creator. I will take care of you. The Living Bible Translation says something that really caught my attention. It says, I will instruct you, says the Lord, and guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch your progress. God wants to watch us grow. He does not want to just guide us and then leave us alone. That scripture says, and we'll watch your progress. So the best pathway is where God is at the core of everything that we do. And only with him, we will be able to navigate the journey of life. Let's remember that scripture, Psalm 127 verse 1. He says that unless the Lord builds the house, I'll translate it to mean that unless the Lord guide us, we will not amount to anything. He says that unless the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that builds it. Hallelujah. We will not labor in vain in life in the name of Jesus Christ. And I, Jesus, when he came, one of the things that he came to do is to ensure that we are guided and we are protected. Let's remember that wherever we are in our journey, you know, some people are up there. They're already on the mountaintop. Some of us are still in the valley. Some of us are in between. Let's just have it at the back of our mind that this Lord that we are serving, he wants to ensure that everything we eventually work together for our good. He does not want anyone to stay on one spot. He wants to guide us to that best pathway for our lives. And I, I, I said here that God wants to guide us. He knows the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46 verse 10. Isaiah 46 verse 10 says, I make known the end from the beginning. So whichever level you are at, God already knows how you started and how the story will end. He says, from ancient times, what is still to come? I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all I please. And where I come from, they say something. They say, follow who no road. You get why? <laughs> Hallelujah. Follow who no road. If he's the creator of the pathway, he means that he already knows everything about our journey. Nothing catches him unaware. Nothing takes him by surprise. He knows, like that scripture, he knows the end from the beginning. 
everything is already planned out. We are all actors in the movie of life. Our end is already predetermined, whether we accept it or not. So it would be very good for us as believers to just follow our director, our producer, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. I want us to use the um, Israelites as an example this morning, even as we talk about this topic. Um, Exodus chapter 13 from verse 21 to 22. Exodus chapter 13 from verse 21 to 22. And um, during the Easter celebration, I had the opportunity to watch uh, the Netflix uh, series on Testament, that story of um, Moses and the Israelites and how. And as I was watching the, the movie, I, said, I got tired with the Israelites, with their murmuring and the complaints. And uh, like I said, uh, uh, they saw everything live and direct. And they kept on complaining. They kept on murmuring. And as I was doing my <laughs> self-righteous beat, where I was sitting, that uh, uh, how can they not believe? God just kind, you know, whispered to my ears that you are the exact same. He who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Stop casting stones at the Israelites. You are the exact same way. Have you forgotten you just complained on your way back from church? <laughs> God will help us. So let's just open our Bible, Exodus 13, from verse 21 to 22. It says, the Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud and provided light at night with a pillar of fire. These allowed them to travel by day or by night. Verse 22. And the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or pillar of fire from his place in front of the people. That is, despite the murmuring, the complaints, the trust issues they had, everything, divine guidance was readily made available to them. So, whether we've made mistakes in the past, wherever we are in our journey with God, let's just be assured, even as God has said, I will guide you, that he will guide us. Amen. Amen. That pillar of, of, of fire or the pillar of cloud never left them. God does not leave us alone. He does not leave us. And, you know, I'm humbled to serve such a God that, that is always there. He's just there. Whether we see him or we don't see him. Whether we feel it or we don't. He is the ever-present help in times of trouble. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. See the Israelites with all their murmuring, with all the complaints, with all the things they did. God's guidance was still with them. He never left them. That's why it's very important. No matter whatever we lose in life, let's not lose God's presence. That is the most important thing. That Lord, don't let me get to that point where you will say, leave him alone. Let's remember Hosea 4, verse 17. God told, he said, leave Ephraim alone. That God will never let us get to that place where God will say, mm, I hands off, I, I just hands off regarding this person. That would not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. So I said here that the best pathway is in God's presence where we are working with him because it is in his presence that he shows us the path of life according to Psalm 16 verse 11. So the Israelites, they had the manifest presence of God in form of the cloud, in form of the fire. But beloved, what we have as children of God in this dispensation of grace is far better. Do we agree? We have the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, instructing us, guiding us. Can we remember that song from Lion King? I love watching movies a lot and I learned a lot from them. Lion King, when they sang, he lives in me. 
He lives in you. He watches over everything you do. That is the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of me. He lives inside of you. And he's watching everything we do. Instructing us, guiding us, directing us. Providing comfort when we need it. Hallelujah. So the best pathway is when the Holy Spirit is guiding us. When the Holy Spirit is guiding us. When we go and purchase a phone, for example, they will tell you, oh, um, let us give you the best package or this is the best deal. The deal that came with us accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior is the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit comes divine guidance. Hallelujah. So we have a total package. A total package as children of God, the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Um, and of course, we know that the Holy Spirit is the, um, the source of divine guidance. And I put here again that the best pathway is where our will aligns with God's will. When we are not struggling to obey God. And one of the declarations for the month says that your life will be a living proof of divine intimacy and you will experience lasting dominion. Amen. So let's, let's just, you know, take time to study the word. Let's know him intimately. Let's know God for ourselves. That's what I always say. It's good that I come here and preach to you. But when I drop the microphone, every man for him self, God for us all. And it is only the truth that you know that will set you free. Not the truth that I know. The truth that I know will set me free. But the truth that you know will also set you free. So let's start, have an intimate relationship with the word. Let's take, and that's another reason to come for a Bible study. Because like if you're you know, lazy to read the Bible on your own, that is an avenue for us to grow in the word of God. The Bible study time is where the word of God is preached. There are things that you, you'll be opened to during the Bible study that otherwise you never can get on your own. So let's be encouraged to attend uh, the Bible study. That's every Wednesday. So we are guided along the best pathway when we cultivate an intimate relationship with God. And I just read this scripture, or oh, I will not read it, Numbers chapter 9, that's still talking about God guiding the Israelites, Numbers chapter 9, from verse 15 to 23, and that scripture just shows us exactly how God guides, he guides in unusual ways. Let's read that scripture. I'll just be super fast about it. Numbers chapter 9 from verse 15 to 23. It says, as soon as the sacred tent was set up, a thick cloud appeared and covered it. The cloud was there each day and during the night, a fire could be seen in it. The Lord used the cloud to tell the Israelites when to move their camp and where to set it up again. As long as the cloud covered the tent, the Israelites did not break camp. But when the cloud moved, they followed it. And wherever it stopped, they camp and stayed there. Whether it was only one night, a few days, a month, or even a year, as long as the cloud remained over the tents, the Israelites stayed where they were. But when the cloud moved, so did the Israelites. They obeyed the Lord's command and went wherever he directed them. Hallelujah. When we are guided on the best pathway, we will discover a few things. I'll just mention a few of them. Number one, that it may not be a familiar journey. It may not be a familiar pathway. Here, the Israelites were walk, going according to the leading of a cloud. Imagine, and I think this analogy was used during one of the Bible studies, that imagine a group of people, not one person, not two, not three, oh, let's say over 600,000 men, not including women and children, moving according to the leading of the cloud. Let's just visualize it. 
the clouds stop, they stop. They take, you know, they make their camp and sleep there. And then the following morning, they go again and check. As the cloud moves, if it doesn't move, they stay. And then sometimes it won't move for a few days, for a few months, or a few years. It doesn't make sense. So when God is guiding us on the best pathway, it may not make sense. Because we are not familiar with his type of guidance. So let's not box him and say, oh yeah, I know how this works. So the Israelites here were following the cloud. And when we talk about divine guidance, it's not an abstract idea or maybe something vague. It's the reality of our everyday life. God wants to guide us daily. And when I was, like, when I read this scripture during the Bible study, I didn't get one particular thing that I got there this time around. And I wrote here that God wants us to check in with him on a daily basis. So it's not a thing of, oh, I checked in with God yesterday, so I don't need to do it again today. For them, they had to check the cloud every day. So also we Christians, we have to check in with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis and ensure that we are still on that path. We are still going along that path is chosen for us. And one of the declaration also says that you shall be daily instructed and guided by the Spirit of the Lord. So even though we don't see the whole pathway, let's take it step by step. One day at a time. After all, the Bible tells us in Psalm 37 that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. So let's take, it's a step-by-step -step thing. You know, sometimes we want to fly without walking first. But let's take it one step at a time. One scripture at a time. And we will get there in the name of Jesus Christ. On this pathway, trust and obedience are required we may not know, you know, how God will lead us, but our own, what we need to do is to trust him and obey him. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. So even on the pathway, as we face trials, let's know that they are part of the plan. They are part of the bigger picture to lead us to our purpose. And that brings me to something that I read somewhere. I think Mark Twain says it. He said that there are two important days in the life of a man. He says the day he was born and the day he discovered the purpose for which he was born. Many people have been born, but not everybody will discover the purpose for which they are born. But when we are guided along the best pathway, God leads us to our purpose. We discover purpose on this pathway. And regardless of the challenges that we encounter on the way, let's know that is for us to eventually fulfill our purpose. Um, I say here that God may not reveal much regarding the pathway to us. It may just tell us bits. For example, when Joseph had that dream, God revealed to him that his brothers were going to bow to him. But one thing that God did not tell him, God did not tell him that before you get to that palace, you will encounter the pits. There will be, you will be in, unjustly imprisoned. You know, he didn't tell him all the details. So we may not even know the details of this best pathway that God is guiding us through. But all we need to do is that he will lead us to his purpose for our lives in the name of Jesus. So the best pathway is not just about reaching the destination. It's also about embracing the entire journey. Every step that we take, every person that we meet, every connection that we make is drawing us closer and closer to God's purpose. Hallelujah. And finally, before I close, I just chip in that God guiding us along the best pathway does not mean it's a solitary journey. 
the Bible says we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, both physically and spiritually. So let's surround ourselves with people that God will use to guide us. People like spiritual mentors, pastors, you know, Christians of like mind. I remember when I was to come here, I didn't plan to come here. But I just happened to be going on a journey that afternoon, that fateful afternoon. And I saw my friend's car parked outside the house. I said, oh, this girl is even at home. Let me just branch and say hello. And I entered the house. And one thing led to another. I found myself telling her about my plans. And when I told her, ordinarily I wouldn't be forward to tell someone something that is not, you know, a plan that has not fully been implemented. I would have kept quiet. But I just found myself telling her everything. And then she goes, oh, I can be of help in this regard and in this regard. Oh, don't go to this place. Go to this place. And when I left her, I just had peace within me that, yeah, what she said really makes sense. And the rest, they say, is history. So God can use people around you to guide you. Let's not be closed off. Let's understand how God guides us. And I'm not saying just follow the advice of anybody or you to check whatever they have said against the word of God against your own conviction and then you will see God talk to you and that will be our lot in the name of Jesus Christ let's not forget that the Bible tells us Proverbs 13 verse 20 either walk it with wise men shall be wise a companion of fools shall be destroyed let's be open to you know guidance also apart from the word of God apart from the Holy Spirit Let's be open to guidance from our spiritual mentors, people around us, and, of course, the Bible. God bless us this morning. Let's rise to our feet as we close the service. Before we close, I would like us to read this scripture, and we will take... Just one prayer point and then we close. Psalm 119 from verse 1. If time permits us, wherever time stops, we'll just stop there. I'll just quickly read from verse 1. He says, you are blessed when you, are, when you stay on course, walking steadily on the road revealed by God. You are blessed when you follow his directions, doing your best to find him. That's right. You don't go off on your own. You walk straight along the road he set. Yes, God prescribed the right way to live. And now you expect us to live it. Oh, that my steps may be steady, keeping to the course that you set. Then i would have no regrets in comparing my life with your counsel. I want us to pray that according to the word of God, that God will guide us along the best pathway for our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that he will cause us to walk steadily on this pathway that he has revealed to us. In the name of Jesus, that every one of us will stay on course. We will partner with the Holy Spirit. We will partner with the word. We will, we will have an open and a willing heart even to hear him when he's directing us in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask that Lord we will not fall, that we will not derail from the course that you have set for us. Lord Jehovah, that you will continue to hold our hands to guide us, to show us the way we should go in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you for your sons and your daughters all over. Daddy, Lord, that would make the decision today to to follow your guidance. Lord, you will empower them to continue to stay on course in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. 
I just want us to, I don't know, choir, do you know the song? I just, it just came to my mind now. Um, for this God is a God forever and ever. He will be in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever.